Manchester United were chaotically defeated at Stamford Bridge and the United Twins need to speak about it. United, United. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Chelsea Here. 4, Manchester United 3. That was one of the most chaotic and frantic games you ever see this season. And it could have been for all the right reasons had it not been for momentary head loss in the most crucial of moments throughout the entirety of the 90 minutes. Defensively, it started in the worst possible way after four minutes. The corner Gallagher goal, another cutback. That seems to be our signature way of conceding goals. And then 15 minutes later, it's Cole Palmer from the penalty spot. Think Anthony was caught out a little and late in terms of tracking Mark Kukurea. And look, there could have been a conversation. Was Mark Kukurea buying the penalty? Did he dive a little bit? It doesn't matter at this point, but it is a talking point nonetheless. What do you think in the comment section, ladies and gentlemen? Ultimately, it was nothing less than what we deserved for starting poorly away from home. The incredible thing about all of that is how one mistake can turn the tide. Chelsea were playing us off the park. We were second best to every single draw, it seemed, at least from my eyes. But that pass by Moises Caicedo, leading to Garnacho getting us back in the game, originally switched the momentum stick. And then the Bruno equaliser follows after a wonderful Delo cross. That was his high point of the game. All of a sudden, you're going into half time a changed team. On top and going for the jugular. But as always, when it comes to this team, when it comes to Manchester United, it has to be pedal to the metal. And if your back wheel comes off, it's about doing that inverted wheelie. Because if you lose momentum or possession in this case, everything behind you is going to look like a team piercing through your heart. And that was the kind of game both sides signed up for after a certain period. Like what Capi alluded to, playing in a game like this is either high risk, high reward or... High risk, low reward. That's my biggest concern overall. Eric Ten Hag is enjoying aspects of the way his team were playing, but I hope that he also acknowledges the downsides. When the team occasionally perform like so, it only further exposes our defensive frailties in the shape of our build-up and how everyone is able to recover in transition. Midfield has little to no budge and then it becomes a task for our defence to sort out and, and that always is a huge gamble, I feel at least. When you watch what we have, there is no wondering why we have conceded 500 plus shots in the Premier League this season. I think it's a, I saw something earlier on on social media saying it's a record for the last decade or so. I mean, <laughs> breathless, take my breath away. Or like. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> even with the missing players and all, oh, don't even get me started on that, ladies and gentlemen. I tweeted on X that now I refuse to believe that this is just bad luck. These injuries are a result of poor preparation and in-season maintenance, in my opinion. And many parties are to blame. The manager and his coaching staff mainly. Ah. Uh... Oh man, conceding those two goals as we did in stoppage time was a kick to the gut. But punishment for the way that we collapsed mentally. <laughs> the low, I think, is safe to say was positioned poorly, which allowed Noni Madueki to blow by him and win the penalty. And it seems in desperation or frustration, he charges forward after the goal is scored by Cole Palmer to avenge that mistake and loses the ball. I get that sometimes those things are a lose-lose situation. If it doesn't work out, win-win if it does. But everything that proceeded after was a reflection of that dramatically calamitous sequence. Cole Palmer is left wide open from a corner kick. And that was from the attack, the, the resulting attack that led uh, after we gave away possession of the ball. They had a chance to win it. They could have. They earned a corner. So, so Cole Palmer's wide open at the edge, in the corner of the box. I'm confused. I'm bewildered. I'm wondering what's going on in real time. I'm wondering 
what's going on afterwards, right? Because Chelsea thought quicker and smarter than us. That's really the reality of it from my perspective. The strike may have got a deflection, but once again, ultimately, that, that could be seen as a form of punishment, ladies and gentlemen. A punishment for Manchester United falling asleep. I've seen people online complain about the added time given and whether it should or shouldn't have been as long. I think it was eight minutes overall. Mm. But we lost on our own accord tonight. That is not an excuse for the players switching off completely before a final whistle is blown. I mean, now we'll be heading back to Old Trafford to play title chases Liverpool. They got their victory against Sheffield United today. And after dropping four points from two winnable fixtures, <laughs> from our perspective, we'll be going into one of our toughest games of the season, needing to get a result because this top four charge is still on, supposedly. It's still on. We have to still believe. <laughs> but when you watch this team's application, especially over the course of the last two games, Brentford was horrific. Chelsea. There were good moments, but there were still bad moments. Bad moments that crept in, that are part of our consistency package. You really think we can get it done? CTC News. Welcome to CTC News, where I will be reporting on the latest, greatest, and not so great as stories revolving around Manchester United. So without a further ado, let's get into the news. Earlier in the week, it was revealed that Southampton's potentially former director of football, Jason Wilcox, offered his resignation and is now set to become Manchester United's new technical director. From my past knowledge, he will be a part of the recruitment processes if appointed. However, Southampton has apparently disputed the existence of a buyout clause in his contract that Man United originally approached the Saints with and may be prepared to make him serve a year's notice, ladies and gentlemen, a year's notice period before going elsewhere. Kind of sounds familiar to the Ashworth saga at Newcastle, right? What are your thoughts on Wilcox? and Manchester United slowly looking to reshape and restructure all footballing operations thus far. Bad news, on top of the injuries now to Rafael Varane and Johnny Evans, but it was revealed that Lissandro Martinez and Victor Lindelof were injured and will be out of action for at least a month, which would leave them with only minimum three games left in the league at least, maybe more if an FA Cup final is achieved. Thoughts on all of those defensive mashups once again, and do you have worries in terms of key players like this Andrew becoming injury prone due to rushed returns and more? Congratulations to Jack and Tyler Fletcher on signing their first professional contracts at the club. The sons of Darren Fletcher, who both joined from City rivals in the summer, have made collectively nine appearances in the under 18s Premier League and we'll be hoping to follow in Darren's footsteps in the distant future. Man United's women's team emphatically came from behind to defeat Everton four goals to one. Goals from centre-back Millie Turner, Leah Galton and two from Ella Toon completed the comeback in a blistering second half. They'll be facing Chelsea next week Sunday in the FA Women's Cup semi-final. A rematch from last season, last season's penultimate fixture in the tournament. Is revenge on the cards, ladies and gentlemen? I hope so. That concludes this episode's iteration of CTC News. Let me know what you thought in the comments about all the stories reported on. Let me know if there's anything I possibly missed out on this week. Ladies and gentlemen, CM Cappy, back over to you. Until the next time, chase the chaos. News. Well, it always feels like a situation of where do we go from here? Huh? I mean, first and foremost, some housekeeping. Thank you for reaching this part of the video, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. 
have your say on the game in the comments as always. Um, and also make sure you go and check out my article at cm22ent.co.uk. Always, if I'm not doing a watch along on this channel, I'm always going to drop a match report on that website. Just depicting the game, speaking about it from my perspective. And then you'll feel the ebbs and flows as you read. I really feel like the way I, I write articles, I try to do it in a way that encourages imagery. Really takes you into that moment rather than just being a bit monotone and, and basic. So it will mean a world if you check that out, ladies and gentlemen. And leave the comment, leave the comment on the page and on my post on X. I'll always, always promote it over there. But Liverpool, Sunday, 3.30 p.m. <laughs> a little earlier than usual, but hey, it's a big game. Like what Cappy said earlier. We didn't bounce back after the Brentford game. We're going to have to bounce back after this game, after yeah. this defeat. But, you know, Ten Hag speaks about bounce backs a lot. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Today we failed. We failed big time to achieve what should have been a victory. Even after the chaos and the mistakes and, and what went down, it should have been a victory. But we failed to hold out. So now against Liverpool, big game. They are going for the title. We're going for top four. Two completely different objectives. Somehow, some way, we're going to need to come away with a victory like we did in the FA Cup. And they're going to be coming out for revenge. So ladies and gentlemen, you know what to do. Let me know what you think, well, how you think the game's going to go. Watch out for our vibe check before match day as well. Always a vibe check on TikTok. And on YouTube Shorts with Cappy. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid to hear what you feel or how you feel the game's going to go down. But we will be there, ladies and gentlemen. Blessings each and every time. Also, over the weekend, it's WrestleMania weekend. If you're a wrestling fan, WWE fan, make sure you join me on the second channel, CM22. I will post a link on X, on Discord, all of those socials to let you know when I'm going live. It will be 11.45 both nights, Saturday and Sunday for WrestleMania night one and night two. So join me over there on the second channel. If you've enjoyed this video, if you've reached the very end, make sure you're hitting that like button. Make sure you're subscribing if you're new, sharing to your friends and frenemies. Enjoy the rest of the week. And until the next time, we'll see you lots in a bit.